Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good evening. How are you? Uh, me, I'm doing okay here. Just recovering from a cold and uh, sore throat and uh yeah it caught me bad this year you know sometimes when the weather is changing uh during the year once in a year something like that you catch something like that but this year it caught me bad but anyway i'm feeling better today than i was yesterday hopefully by tomorrow or tuesday i should be back in action full swing how are you dear people i know it's late over there at this time I know that uh, a lot of you are getting ready for uh, uh, bed. Some of you are winding down and obviously there are still some who are wide awake. But I thought I should come here live and uh, offer my take on some issues that are prevailing in this beloved nation of ours called Zambia. Muziko ya Zambia. Ichalo Chesu Icha Zambia. Where... Uh, politics don't sleep. It's, 20, it's politics 24-7, round the clock, every day, seven days a week. People eat politics in Zambia. They love politics. They breathe politics. Everything is political. They just cannot keep their hands off politics. Everybody loves politics. Everything is politicized. Ranging from Katikaya, my social media, Uko, my politics, ruling opposition, football association of Zambia, civil society, church bodies, Wakatolika, na Wonsawashara, there is always politics involved. For a developing country, though, it's not always a good idea for everything to be politicized. Because then when, when, when are you going to focus on development? When are you going to focus on policy? Everything is politicized. How can you develop like that? It doesn't make sense. You can't all be fighting politics, politics, politics all the time. There needs to be moments when people just sit down and dialogue, deliberate, debate, collaborate, work together, seek a middle ground, consensus, harmony with the goal of solving specific problems that have been identified. But if everyone is preoccupied with politics, it now just becomes a, a, a question of positioning, power play, titles, and the benefits that come with all that. And Muzambia koena to aditemwisha sana ama titles. People are addicted to titles. Kanga tinichean. People love titles. I can tell you in the developed nations, those things are irrelevant. But Muzambia, yeah, my title, Tia Konda. Avandiwa treasurer, avandiwa deputy chairman, avandiwa vice chairman, na fiance, shara, avandiwa doctor, shanchanuko. The people of Muzambia, wali fitemulisha sana. Avandiwa bishop, shanchanuko. Avandiwa father, shanchanuko. Avandiwa papa, whatever. Yeah, ba. All this action, all this commotion, all this noise in a developing country that is still struggling to get out of poverty. Mm, 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 mm. <coughs> ah, excuse me. Now, there are three things I want to talk about in this video. I don't want to get carried away because my voice is strained, so I need to give my voice a break. But uh, number one, in the Falklands, number one, Iria she ya ukula chita advertise o ukula issue sha want to pass social media about your private life or about your husband and your wife and things like that. Yeah, if everybody has a right to do that, but why are you advertising it on social media? There must be a reason. So I'll get to that in a moment, but I won't dwell too much on that. Second, I would like to talk about the hypocrisy in the church body in Zambia. Look, I don't want to get into fights with the church. I don't want to get into fights with I love the church. <clears throat> but I'm getting sick and tired of the hypocrisy. And I'm not the only one. I, I bet you there are many Zambians who are also getting sick and tired of it. There are many Zambians who are also getting sick and tired of it. 
But number three, I would like to talk about a biblical issue. There is a setup that Jesus experienced that would have been a catalyst to his demise, to his death. It was a setup. And this is like a quiz because I would like us to touch into that, to, to dwell into that a little bit, to discuss that a little bit. And I want you to uh, give me your thoughts on the matter. But I know that this was a setup and it's a well known fact by uh, uh, theologians. Theologians, okay. But number one, this issue of advertising your wife per social media, talking about your wife and uh, oh, I'm with my wife, I love my wife and things like that. But if you do that and then when people comment on that future for then I don't understand the logic in that. If you are going to be upset that people are commenting about Umukashove, yeah, yeah, you lose your temper over that. Cash, we don't just advertise. Then why are you advertising? Because the, the, the situation when you post Umukashove on social media, it's like you want people to see and you want people to comment. It is your feeling. Otherwise, why are you posting about your wife on social media? Then when we comment, yeah, you're asking us whether we are uh, married to our mothers. Look, come on. Come on. Come on. Let's be reasonable here, okay? If, if I have a wife and I don't want people to be commenting on her left, right, and center, I'm not going to post up on social media. It's a, it's a matter of common sense because social media is a, an open forum. It's a public forum. The moment you post something there, that means you're inviting uh, some sort of analysis or comment. Take your feed. Number one, register post, register post in a row. Over and over again, we let post to Mukashove. Everyone got Waranda call. We offer advice and guidance. Can you a public figure? We give you our assessment. We give you our understanding of the situation. Number what is that? That is mood instability, being unstable. If you don't want, I want to just comment to Mukashove. We let just post on social media. It's simple and straightforward. Why are you exposing your madam then when we comment? I mean, come on. You see, this is why. You see, I, 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 I'm not, I, I want, I'm involved in so many things. Not just, I don't want to be consumed by politics. You're all consumed by politics. I don't want to be consumed. There's life even outside politics, in case you didn't know. Okay? There's life outside politics. But you keep dragging me into politics. Why? Because the standard of opposition leaders in Zambia still remains very questionable. And that's what bothers me. If I ever get into Zambian politics, it will be primarily to up the game in terms of quality of leadership. I'm not satisfied with the quality of leadership in the opposition. I'm an opposition figure myself because I decided that I don't want to be a press singer. I feel that it would be more beneficial for Zambians if I offer checks and balances. But it's not just a question of checks and balances. It's a question of checks and balances with quality and integrity. And that is a better service to the Zambian people than uh, checks and balances of Chipante Pante. Anyhow, you criticize something even if it's a good thing. That is not of service to the Zambian people. What is of service to the Zambian people is proper checks and balances where you call a spade a spade, you offer better ideas and solutions or alter alternate ideas and solutions and you let the people judge. But not where it's out of spite and you want the government to fail. That is not good because if the government fails, the people suffer. The, the way we do, I, I don't think we have really understood how democracy works. Yes, we have been democratic for some time now, since 1991, but I think we haven't really grasped how democracy is supposed to work. The way we do it in Zambia, but anyway, I don't blame you, because had I not left Zambia uh, and seen how they do it in other countries, I would have thought the things that go in Zambia are normal. I would have thought also the way you are thinking that everything that you are seeing in Zambia in our political discourse, political dispensation and political activity, every day. Uh, I would have thought that it's normal, but I'm here to tell you that it's not normal, and it's chipante pante, and it's taking us nowhere. Let me tell you something. If you're not practicing democracy properly, you can have all the funding in the world from the IMF, the World Bank, China, and all that stuff, and you can have so much money coming in, but if you're not organized politically, the economy will not make significant progress, and people will remain in abject poverty. The power players, the people in the forefront, both in politics, in church, civil society, are doing a serious disservice to the Zambian people because they are grounded in deception and manipulation and we are sick of it. We are sick of it. 
I would advise the opposition leaders to, to improve on their quality of leadership because what they are subjecting the evidence to is total mediocrity and that, my friends, is unacceptable. If you are running as a presidential candidate, you are not supposed to use such foul language. You cannot be asking whether you are married to our mothers. That is unbecoming of someone who is a president of a political party and is aspiring for the Zambian presidency. That quality of leadership must come to an end. And I hope that me being here and meddling in Zambian politics may force uh, these mediocre leaders that we have in the opposition, across the opposition, to improve in their standard of opposition leadership. If you don't want us to comment on your wife, stop posting about her on your page. Why don't you understand that? Why don't you want, why don't you understand that? Now, <clears throat> let me move on to the second issue. <clears throat> I don't want to hold you up too much because I know it's late over there and you're trying to sleep. <laughs> The second issue I wanted to talk about is the hypocrisy going on in the church. The hypocrisy. You see, I don't want, like I've said, to fight with these church bodies. But I'm so sick and tired of them. I'm so sick and tired of them. I'm so sick and tired of their hypocrisy. I'm so sick and tired of their tribalism. I'm so sick and tired of their lust for power. The church leadership, it's very well. If you don't know, you, 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 the people are saying, oh, they speak for us, the poor. Please. <laughs> Please. Eh? Please. Come on. I mean, we have been at this game long enough. You don't know that the <clears throat> most of the church leadership in Mozambia, they are eating very well, drinking very well. They are uh, inspired by the love of good food and the drink, and even women, yeah, the, the church leadership. Not all of them, but many of them. Nivacha Kurwa, some of them, they, they, they may take a few sips here behind the scenes that you don't know. Sleep with uh, some uh, people around that you don't Look, I was born, for example, uh, let me not specify any churches because, I, I, you know, I, again, I don't want to get into a fight with the churches. But the church bodies in Mozambia have been overtaken by cadarism, hypocrisy, guilt, lust, selfishness, drunkenness, gluttony. And these are the people parading themselves and saying they are fighting for the poor. Give me a break. Look, there are some churches that provide valuable, essential services for their followers, for the community in general, and we thank them abundantly for that. But... Most of the church body in Zambia is highly questionable. And you will know that they are falling off the tracks, going off the rails, the more and more they dwell into politics, they dive into politics, they meddle into politics. Look, I already explained this yesterday, and I don't want to continue talking about the same thing every day. But this hypocrisy is just totally out of this world. The church should continue working hard to serve the poor. Just continue helping the poor. If you have food, give them food. If people are in jail, go there, talk to them, and help them reform. People getting out of jobs uh, in jail. People getting out of jail, help them. Re, uh, acquaint themselves with society so that they can fit in to simulate into society. People who are grieving loss of loved ones, eh? try and provide counseling. People who are battling with alcoholism, drug abuse, terminal illness, try and offer solace. People who are struggling with sin, try and offer redemption. People who are dying, go by their bedside and pray for them. Getting too involved in politics. Look, my family is Catholic, by the way. I was born in the Catholic Church. I was baptized in the Catholic Church. By St. Francis Kuma Kenny. My baptism name is Nicholas. <coughs> so those of you who are saying, you must, I don't know what I'm talking about. I know exactly what I'm talking about. Okay? <coughs> when, when my late father was dying, it was a priest that came, or a representative from the Catholic Church, 
came and prayed for him at his bedside. And then we also had the pastor from the Pentecostal church who also came and prayed for him at his bedside. So I appreciate these things. But that's what you're supposed to be doing. Okay? That's what you're supposed to be doing. Not jumping into politics. Jumping into politics. For what? For what? It is because you have been overtaken by Kadarism and you have been overtaken by a lust for power and alcohol and women. You need to stop that. So what I'm going to say is, you know, you can't indict an entire church body, but you leaders in the upper whatever, try and keep your subordinates in line when they stand before the pulpit. Let them not be preoccupied by politics. Let them preach love. And behind the scenes, continue strengthening your wonderful programs to help people in very vulnerable positions. That is the best manifestation of love. But to frustrate a sitting government, like you did to President Lungu, and that, like you are doing now to President Haka Inde Ikinima, is totally unacceptable. Something is wrong with you. Don't you see that? And slowly but steadily, Zambians are beginning to see that there's something wrong with you. And it's not just the Catholic Church. In the 90s, I used to see how even some who are outside the Catholic Church were compromised. We used to hear about brown envelopes flying around. When the church gets deeper and deeper in politics, it becomes dirty, dirty. Nambai Mwewa Church Body, Mozambique. Is that what you want? You want to become dirty? You want to divide, to dive into politics and open yourself up to ridicule and criticism? Because you have enough debt in your bodies, in your church bodies. You have enough debt there. If you are not careful at the rate you are going, you will stop becoming a legitimate religious institu institution. You will become a mafia organization. Okay, you stop deceiving people. You have done that for many years, you have done that for many decades, and you have taken advantage of people's vulnerability. You manipulate people, you deceive people, hiding behind the pulpit, hiding behind the cloth, hiding behind the word of God. You have lost your ways. You may not like me for saying this, but I'm telling you the truth. Hey, even the Pharisees didn't like Jesus. My goodness. People don't like the truth. The truth is you've lost your way. And because you've lost your way, you're going deeper and deeper into politics. You are the moral leaders of the nation, not the political leaders. You can't differentiate that. You see, for a developing country like Zambia to develop, everybody must stay in their lane. You can't all just jump into politics. Even me, I love politics, but I try not to jump into it because initially I wanted to get into the presidential race in 2026, but I'm not crazy about that idea unless, unless it's a last resort. But I'm not, because there are many other things that I can do to contribute to national development. It's not just through politics. You see, for a developing country to, to, like Zambia to develop, the church must stay in its lane. The politicians must stay in their lane. The military must stay in its lane. Civil servants must stay in their lane. Traditional leaders must stay in their lane. By everybody staying in their lane, they can focus on what they are there for and what they should be doing and improving on existing programs, which has the benefit of helping poor people, people who need help, people who need services. But if you are leaving your lens and everybody, the traffic is flowing to politics, politics, politics. They are not going to eat politics. The church must stay in the lane. Go out in the streets, in the jails, in the hospitals and go and help poor people. And sick people and people who need help and uh, beggars in the streets and orphans and street children. You go and do that, man. And let the politicians do that because we have enough problems in the political field. Already there's a lot of mediocrity in there. And really what I would like to do on the political front, <coughs> if I can, is to uh, help the opposition leaders improve on their quality of leadership. It's too mediocre. Okay? 
the the opposition leadership they leave so much to be desired when i see the opposition leadership there is not a single leader there that i can see who can replace uh, president aga indekrim and do a better job there is no one i can see in there Listen, I'm not going to lie to you. If I, when I look at the opposition leadership in Zambia, I even lose my appetite because there's no personality that I've seen in there who can do a better job than President Haga Indekirima. Which is a shame because in a population of 20 billion, you'd expect there to be quality leadership. But what the people are being subjected to is mediocre leadership. And I'm saying that's not good enough. We need good checks and balances in Zambia. But we also need better relations between the opposition and the ruling government. Because there are areas of common interest where they can work together to improve the conditions of people in Zambia. You know, I got carried away. I didn't want to talk as much as... I'm putting a lot of pressure on my voice, so let me uh, wind down on that. But uh, it's a shame what the church is doing. It's really a big shame. They have decidedly decided to dive into politics. I know what it is. It's not about saving the poor. It's about power. Power is sweet. Power is sweet. And when they have power, they have money. And then when they have money, they can have bigger crowds, audiences, and followers in their church pews. But when are you going to start talking about redemption and salvation and healing? Because we need that in Zambia. There are a lot of people in Zambia who are hurting real bad in here in the heart. There are a lot of Zambians who are suffering from mental health issues, mental illness. There are a lot of Zambians who are languishing in the streets. There are a lot of Zambians who are dying every day. And all you can think about is politics. If you are honest, we would have known that, we would have seen that. We are not stupid. We are not stupid. We are not stupid. <clears throat> the third issue that I would like to talk about, and then I close, Yeah. Yeah. The third issue that I'd like to talk about is <clears throat> there was a setup situation that Jesus found himself in. It was very, very dangerous. It was a trap by the Pharisees. It was a trap by the Pharisees. He was approached by the Pharisees with a trick question. This was a setup by the leadership in the Pharisees in their ranks to set him up so that he could be labeled guilty uh, for, I think, what would be in those days tantamount to treason. Had Jesus answered this question wrongly, he would have been arrested and brought before the Roman Empire. And they would have condemned him to death. But obviously, that would have led to his premature death because as things were meant to be, what actually led to Jesus' death was when Judas betrayed him and uh, they were able to get hold of him. And uh, they came up with all sorts of unsubstantiated charges. And you know that the charges were unsubstantiated because because uh, Pi Pi Pontius uh, Pilate, uh, whatever his name was, the one who was presiding over those proceedings, was actually reluctant to have Jesus killed. He was reluctant. He felt very uncomfortable about it because in his judgment, in his judgment, the, the charges that were being brought before him were really unsubstantiated. And there just wasn't one clear-cut case where he could say that, okay, this is definitely... Uh, 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 a treasonable or uh, a, a capital offense that is deserving of death. He felt very uncomfortable about it. 
But there were all these charges labeled, and uh, I guess he just decided to please the crowd. <coughs> because he himself was fearing that if he didn't have Jesus killed, uh, he would be killed for covering up or shielding Jesus. Anyway, I'm not going to waste much of your time. Does anyone know what situation I'm talking about? The question that the Pharisees asked Jesus. I forget the... Uh, it's in Mark chapter... Is it chapter 12, verse 7? Yeah, I think it's in Mark, Mark chapter 12, verse 7. I forget the, the chapter or verse, so forgive me if I'm wrong. All right, I'm not going to take up a lot of your time. But if you ask most theologians, they will tell you that when Jesus was approached, you know, they always found, they were always looking for something to pin Jesus on. But for all the commotion that Jesus was bringing along, you know, raising people from the dead, healing the blind, the sick, for all that commotion and Jesus building a very huge following within the three years of his ministry. The Pharisees still had a problem of finding a very specific charge uh, that was worth pinning on Jesus to cause him a serious trouble. You know, they were struggling to find something, but they couldn't find it. What can we charge this guy with? so that he's executed because this guy is a threat he's exposing our hypocrisy he's challenging our customs he is a threat we have to get rid of this guy but they just couldn't find something how are you going to try and kill someone who's raising the dead healing the sick healing the blind people are following him traveling long distances just to follow him and they still couldn't find the right charge. So they came up with underhand tactics. Such as saying, look, he's, hung, he's hanging around with tax collectors. Look at that. Oh, look at that. He's hanging around with uh, prostitutes. <laughs> they said, oh, look at that. He's not they're not washing their hands before they eat. In which he says, it's not what comes into your mouth that is important. It's what is goes out of your mouth that's important they came up with so many things silly things but they couldn't pin him on that uh <clears throat> muyunda matakala says guess it's about paying to caesar correct it's about paying to caesar go and ask the theologians it sounds when you you, you all know about that passage in the Bible where it says, give Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Let me tell you something about that. Go and ask theologians, when you're just reading it in the Bible or hearing it in the church, it sounds like a harmless encounter that Jesus had with the Pharisees. But let me tell you what had happened. The Pharisees schemed, okay? Uh, they planned that, look, we can't pin this guy. He's giving us a headache. He's challenging us our establishment, our, you know, what today you'd call a church body, <clears throat> whatever they called it in those days. We have to find something to pin him on. So it is indicted and condemned to death by the Roman Empire. In those days, you don't play with taxes. You just don't. You don't steal from the government. Okay. It was like what China is today. Even if you steal a small thing from the Chinese government through taxes, you're gone. But in those days, it was more harsh than even China. You don't steal from the Roman government or from the Roman Empire. You don't. Matakala <clears throat> answered correctly. That was the question. Now, what they had decided was, let's go and ask this guy this question. Because since his teachings are deviant, away from the norms, away from the, the way we've been doing it, <clears throat> this is a trap. 
Since this Jesus guy had it, I'm going to penalty. No could I take him for unganyo. And calling himself the son of man. Apa, ebotu alamu ikatira apa. That's where he's going to face the wrath of the mighty Roman Empire. So they came to him and they said, To who do we pay our taxes? Had Jesus said anything along the lines of, Don't pay to Caesar, don't pay to the government. Had he said anything? Defying the payment of taxes to Caesar, that would have been, he would have fallen right into the trap of the Pharisees. And that is what the Pharisees would have gone with to the authorities to convince them that this man is trying to overthrow the government, is inciting the masses, and is therefore deserving of death. That was the trap. Right there. And trust me, they had spent a lot of time planning that question. They had tried different questions to see which questions they should ask him. But that was the catch. That was their aha moment. And they, all, they always approached him nicely, with, with respect, as if they didn't have any ulterior motives. When Jesus said, give Caesar what belongs to Caesar, the Pharisees got so frustrated. They got so frustrated because his answer was the direct opposite of what they were expecting. And they just walked away. <laughs> they just walked away. They said, nah, this guy, we can't handle this guy. We don't want to do with him. Because his teaching was so different from what had been going on for centuries. They expected him. They expected Jesus to say, Caesar Panse, of what relevance is Caesar? I am the son of man. I tell you where that money should go, or it should go to the church or synagogue. They expected Jesus to say something like that. But that's not how he answered. <laughs> so those Pharisees we are very frustrated. Jesus said, give Caesar, well, give Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Pay your taxes. And obviously scholars can interpret, can extend the interpretation of that uh, encounter in many ways. But really, Jesus is acknowledging that there is government and you have to be faithful to your government when you pay taxes. Now, I don't know what the situation in Zambia is, but in developed countries like the USA, uh, the church bodies are tax exempt. So, like, the Catholic Church doesn't pay taxes in America. But they're not supposed to participate in active politics. Like, any, like NGOs, it's worrisome when the church jumps into politics. If you have tax-exempt status, you're not supposed to be actively involved in politics per se. Look, we're going to debate about this on and on and on and still reach no... Uh, definite conclusion because everybody sees things differently but all i can just tell you is sometimes it's just a question of wisdom and sometimes it's just a question of saying okay where are we as a country and where are we trying to go and what is helping and what is not helping just because you can do something it doesn't mean you should do it just because zambia is a free democracy and anyone can say whatever they want that doesn't necessarily mean that every Jim and Jack should dive into active politics. Wisdom dictates that if something is going to contribute to the division, then it's better to find a different approach. 
if something is going to contribute to tribalism, then maybe it's better to try a different approach. There's no reason why the government, why the Catholic Church, for example, can't try and work with the government behind the scenes to improve the plight of the poor. Instead of going on the pulpit and publicly indicting a government, they did that to President Lungu. They are now doing that to President Aka and Kilima, and it's just not healthy, and it's not helpful. Uh, <clears throat> just because you can smoke a cigarette, that doesn't mean you should. Just because you can do something or you have the right to do something, because I see the Catholics and other church leaders are insisting that they have a right to participate in politics. <laughs> Let's imagine that they have that right. But does that mean they should? I don't think so. I think that they can use their position and energy in a more constructive way. Uh, such as dialogue and offering advice and guidance to the government and seeking closer ties with the government so that they can make certain programs work. But standing on the pulpit and indicting the government, I don't think that's healthy for a developing country like Zambia. So that's not wisdom. And yet the church should be the fountain of wisdom. Just as the Supreme Court is the fountain of justice, the church should be the fountain of wisdom. The church should bring healing, unity, harmony, tribes coming together, political parties working together. That's what the church should be doing. Jesus did respect the authority when he said, give Caesar what belongs to Caesar. The government and the church are two separate entities and both have their roles to play. And both have a common interest, and that is, for example, the poor, right? But how are we going to address issues affecting the poor, the sick, the grieving? Through dialogue. Not through going on the pulpit and making fun of graphs. That is not promoting harmony. That is not promoting unity. It is not promoting unity. It is promoting division. It is promoting tribalism. That's what it's doing. It's pitting one Zambian against the other. It is the church body using their immense influence to manipulate and deceit people. And that, my friends, is wrong. Work with government to make things happen. The people who should oppose government and the opposition leaders, because that's part of the democratic setup, right? Checks and balances. They should oppose, but not oppose uselessly or senselessly or vindictively, but constructively by offering alternate ideas, proposals, and then let people make their judgment. That's how you do democracy, not the way we are doing it, Chipante Pante. Number one, mediocre leadership in the opposition. Number two, the church diving into politics. Wow. So you add mediocre opposition leaders or mediocre opposition leadership who are lasting for money, power, women, and all that stuff. And then you have a church body also lasting for power, political leadership. <laughs> That's a disaster for a poor country like Zambia. The leaders are not looking at the plight of the poor. They are pretending to, but they are not looking at the plight of the poor. They are looking for power and money. And that is where me and them are crossing paths. That's where we are differing right there. And Zambians must open up their eyes because... If Zambians let the church body know that they are not interested in divisive politics from the church, and if the Zambian people let the opposition know that they need to improve their style of opposition leadership, if Zambians let these forces know, things will be better for Zambia. 
But if you let these power players have their way, they are going to thrive on manipulation and deception, and that will keep poverty in Zambia for another two, three decades, and none of us want that. So I'm calling them out, and I'm exposing their hypocrisy, and I'm saying that they will not proceed with their mission unnoticed. I will continue keeping an eye on them and challenging them to tell the truth, to be honest. Okay? Okay, I think I've talked enough. Thank you for watching, and you have a good night. I'll see you this coming week. God bless. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you. This is DJ Mutati exclusive. Savage. All right, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutati Mpondo. I love you. Peace. I gotta go.